Hello there ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good night, good morning, wherever you are. I hope you're feeling well. Today we're taking a look at the Galapagos component in Grasshopper, which is a very interesting component because it makes you resolve things that you normally do th would be very difficult by hand. And in this example, we're using basically just a few cubes and we have them like a line through them and we want to find out what would be a way through those cubes without touching them but this would be all generated by the script itself so let's get into it and let's get started so great uh, we will just start with a new file so you can just follow along rather easily so um, you don't have to do that but what I want you to basically do so we have just a simple rectangle right and in this rectangle there are just some points and those points then have like a, like a some rectangles in there like those like each point has one there will be more and more and then we are defining two points here and there and it basically needs to find the optimal way between those two points. So if it goes like this, there are two points intersecting here, but it should go like this, so there are no points intersecting there at all. So we're just gonna set this thing first up, and then we're going to take a look at how Galapagos will help us with resolving this thing here. So we first gonna do a very simple rectangle here, well, not this one, but that one. And we're just gonna give it a two numbers letters here. Um, like this one and that one. By the way, you can download this entire script also in the description later on. And we're gonna make this a little bit bigger like that. And then we're gonna populate it as well with just some random points that will be moved into the geometry uh, or like will be those boxes later. So this will be created key right now again. And we're gonna do some smaller number sliders for that as well to create our rectangles that we need. Perfect, now we have those. I'm just gonna hide those things here and that as well. And now we need to create the line that goes in between those two points. So we're gonna use points, the like first point, the starting point, and then the point. We set this one here, that one here, and the other one we we're gonna set on the top, like that. Now we're going to create a line in between those two points, like, like this, right? Or like with um, uh, interpolates this and this would normally make a line between those two points however we also want to have different lines so we can actually adjust it with that we're actually going to use the gene pool it's on a util and then gene pool and actually Galapagos will also be able to manipulate this and we're gonna create points on here that will be manipulated by that so we're gonna simply do this by um, first setting this gene pool uh, no, well, how, how we make this right so we're gonna first divide the curve that is in between those two points I'm just gonna remake this just by this very rather simple script here and those will be the points that we will be manipulated right so it will be the and we need to only take those points like we don't want to care about the first and the last point but just the points in between so we're gonna get the list length um, of the points here of the gene pool and we're gonna, get, we're gonna be dividing those points off the line that we have here by this length this will give us 11 different um, points however we want to have the first and last one um, replaced by like uh, other points that we want to use ourselves and those will be like those points right so we don't want to have them move at all because we want to have a set start and ending point so we're going to just go insert items and we're going to insert at the first position and at the last position the point that we want to use so the first list one here and another one here and we're going to insert the point no actually this will be the item that will be inserted that one and we're gonna create so at zero they will be the uh, starting points at the indice zero and this will be from that so this point will be the the first point that goes this will one zero one two three four five and whatever and this will be then the list from that and exactly 
and this will be like then the end point, so we do minus one, which takes the end point of that list. And this will be the list that we defined basically here. So now we have a list of 13 different points of which we can actually manipulate those. So if you're gonna use interpolate, we are having those points here all together and I think it should define a new line. By the way, with Control Q, you can hide those ones. And we see that it does not create a point because I don't know exactly why it does that at the moment, but maybe those points are actually wrongly put together. Let's take a look. If we take this one in here, we see it still creates a line. If we take this one, it doesn't create a line anymore. So let me see. The item will be this one at indice zero, which will be inserted there. And ah, yes, we just need to like hide that one as well, just to make sure. Some problem solving on the way, which is always a nice way of understanding the script better than before. And I guess it had to do because. So let me actually check the other script as well. How I did it here, because there I have it. Ah, okay, maybe we, we're actually doing something different first. So we're having those points that are defined here, right? Ah, yeah, we also need to uh, remove the first and the last point. I think that's actually the problem that we got into here. So that will then give us just the middle points and we do want to add um, one point at the end and one at the beginning. Yes, that was exactly the, the mistake that I made. So basically I had to remove the first and the last point to insert the first and the last one, which are not moved again in the end. So we have the result which works. However, now that we have those points here, we also want to modify them as well. So we have those list of nine points here. And we actually see we have 10 different items in the gene pool. So we want to actually um, make the uh, division just one item less. So we go under expression at the count at x minus one. So um, are we actually going to plus one? No, I think we're going to minus one. Because at the end we have 10 points here that are defined like that. Or we can just leave it like this for now. I think it doesn't really matter too much. Anyway, we want to modify those points by a certain amount. So we're going to use the move commands and then we're going to move it direction x, so into this direction here. And this will then be from the gene counts and we want to have it between minus 100 and plus 100. Maybe just like do 50 just to stay, do not make it like too big, you know, this can also result into some trouble. Anyway, we then would use, use this as the x factor and move those points into that direction like this. So then we're gonna, you see, we can just move those points around as we want. Great, and now we put this one back in here and you see we have our list that is basically a modified version of that. Great, and it looks like it all works pretty well. So that's pretty good. I thought there would be some troubles with the first point, but I guess it's all fine, right? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I think it actually, ah, yeah, it actually duplicates uh, that point there in the beginning. But I think we can actually remove those by, because we have nine different geometries and ten in, in the motion. So we're actually just gonna add one at the count here. And so we do go under count expression x plus one like that. And yeah, so now that we have that. Anyway, now we're getting slowly to the um, gene pool thing. So when we want to, how, what the gene pool does, so basically what the Galapagos does, it takes a genome and then it takes also a fitness expression. The genome basically can modify the value. So we will want to them to modify this value here. And it sees you have, it has this like very special red uh, or like pinkish color on it. And then we're gonna use a fitness, which it wants to go as close as possible. So if we double click it, you see it gives us like the fitness and then there are some solver things as well, which we don't need to worry about at the moment. 
and then also the solver itself which we can like click on and then it can start doing it anyway but we basically we want to minimize the fitness and I'll tell you why so we have those points here right and if they're gonna be intersecting um, those things here like for example like we do this one here so the curve intersecting curve curve between curve so we take this point here and then we take our rectangles that we had in the beginning you see it gives us certain points that it intersects to right so and basically we want to reduce the amount of intersections so we're just going to use it by um, do a list length of the points that get, get created and then flatten that list and it, it gives us the maximum amount of points that actually get intersected so we want to minimize this number as much as possible so we can take this and we're just going to use a very simple number like here and we're going to take this and put it on this number here and then it basically searches for the the Galapagos component searches for minimizing the amount of points that are intersecting so we have first of all that but we might so if you're gonna click on solver and we're gonna minimize this and then we're gonna start solving and if you click on this one here it you see every single generation how it sees and looks of of how it's how it evolves over time basically it always has some it is not machine learning but it is basically kind of like a randomizer try and outer and if we're gonna drag this by the side you see it goes back and forth with those values and it tries to see which one fits the best and as we defined it before we basically want to minimize the amount of the amount of intersection that we have so you see it it tries to reduce it as much as possible here and it goes like further and further and you see um, it actually it goes better and better each each generation so that that's already like a pretty good thing to use actually I want to maybe I can actually because right now there are so many things going on here so it's actually good I want to just hide those points here to make a clear picture so you see for example just by a few seconds of solving it actually made um, a, a route like this already possible however we will also want to go it exactly to zero so there is actually a very good way of doing this because um, right now it just takes a look at reducing this, this number as much as possible and this can get into issues because it doesn't know which way to go really but if we give it like some kind of hint so if you're gonna use a pull line that inter that uh, puts those two points together I actually want to just do it like that you see it it makes a small line through those points here and what we want to do is that those points then get also reduced here so it goes closer and closer to this value here so we're just going to use the length component and then it gives us the curve length and we're going to use a mass addition of this as well or we can um, actually put those two together so we're going to flatten this first and then we're going to use a mass addition and then this will be the ah and we also need to remove null trees so if you go under um, the sets sets tree and then under clean tree we can remove items that are like non-valid so we're gonna remove those here and then it gives this gives us also a value and now we can basically put those two two values together like at the, this one and that one but we want also going to give it a weight of how much um, if those intersecting points are important so I guess I use a multipl multiplication and this would be whoopsie and a multiplication of like that because then it's not as heavy weighted as the other one and we're gonna put this one in here as well and then you see that would be like the the weighting so I can you know, reduce this a little bit make it a little smaller anyway and now if you're gonna go into the Galapagos searcher again we're gonna go on minimize in this case and we're gonna start solving it as well and I want to just display all the geometries so yeah now it kind of like searches and, and sees which one goes like this best and you see in the beginning it always goes as random as possible this also has to do with the um, 
like temperature and the cooling I think in the beginning it goes like more radical and makes as many iterations or as many different um, takes as possible and the further it goes the less completely randomized it gets and as you see we slowly uh, over time it, it, it tries to find the best solution of those paths and you see as well the more this line goes like to the to the top here the more it actually is able to to give us the best solution in, in this case and just goes iterates it through 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 and through over over again compares it to the old one and then uh, yeah gives us the solution that we are actually looking for in this case to minimize the amount of intersections and minimizing if there is an intersection minimizing the length of the intersection so in case like those like here right it tries to go more into this direction for example and there's also a way for example if it gets stuck a little bit you can for example click this button here which is the like um, i think it, it enters like a random mutation so then you see it might go like a little bit wild again a little bit or click it again i think i did click it correctly you see it goes a little bit wild and it tries to um, try different uh, ways of doing it again so that's sometimes a good way to to break up a little bit uh, the things that, that you made but it also kind of loses the process, progress that you made before but it sometimes can give you a better solution so anyway and i think it actually looks pretty good here kind of like it gets it almost done to zero we actually there was a max stagnant i think this one we should have maybe set a little bit lower in a way but because now it, it goes through every single iteration and it, it takes a long time until uh, because now you see it already gets those last ones uh, like almost done anyway yeah thank you very much for watching and i hope this helped you out i think galapagos is a very interesting tool if you want to if you have different parameters that you want to solve but you don't it would take forever to do it by hand and it makes it sometimes easier to just make the computer do it because it can go through those iterations a lot quicker and without needing to um, like adjust it all the way and yeah and you will see it basically found the, found the final solution so i think that's pretty useful and yeah actually let me just see yeah okay so we can just stop this over here and now we have our solution that goes through the maze without touching any of those things and yeah it works have a great day and see you in the next one